there's a characteristic that is consistent with every great defensive team, and it's boxing out. All four guys committing to looking at their guy, going and blocking them out, while the on-ball defender gives a great effort contesting the jump shot. Look how every Villanova defender, when the shot goes up, locates their man with their eyes, moves towards them, and then they go pursue the ball while the guy guarding the ball contests the jump shot. Locating your man and boxing out takes no talent at all, but you have to be disciplined to commit to doing this possession after possession. And too often when a shot goes up, guys turn and run to the paint and stare at the rim because they want the rebound and they give up completely unnecessary offensive rebounds that could potentially cost them the game. If you think about the fact that 40 to 60 shots from both teams go up every game and that ball is loose for anybody to take, think about how important boxing out is. But we also need to talk about the strategy of rebounding. When a shot goes up from a short distance away from the basket, there's going to be what's called a short rebound radius because the ball isn't hitting the rim very hard, so it's probably going to land somewhere in the paint. So this means that on short shots, you need to understand that that ball is probably going to be right around the charge circle. In comparison, as guys start shooting the ball further away from the bucket, that means that the rebound radius increases and the ball could potentially go almost anywhere inside of the three-point line. And because the game has changed and teams are shooting more and more threes, that means there's going to be a lot more long rebounds, which makes boxing out that much more important. It's also important to understand that where the shot is coming from impacts where it's going. Corner shots are typically either going to come right back to the shooter or bounce off the rim and go long. So rebounding requires more than just the willingness to box out, but being mindful of where the ball could go. Take this clip as an example. The defender underneath the rim has perfect inside leverage, but because the ball is being shot from three, the odds are it's not going to land where he's standing. So he fights to switch leverage with his matchup, knowing that the ball probably will not bounce in that rebound radius when it's being shot from so far. So as you're boxing out or teaching it, you have to think about this rebound radius. Watch as this defender starts to push his matchup as far as he can towards the baseline knowing that he can't get a rebound from behind the backboard. And then later in that game, 15 pushes his way into the rebounding radius and ends up getting an offensive rebound versus three defenders. This is why Liberty University, which was statistically the best team in the country at defensive rebounding, teaches their guys to push their matchup as far to the baseline as possible to eliminate their chances of getting a rebound. And that's why you can see a possession like this, where the two Alabama defenders don't even make an effort to box out and give up an offensive rebound by standing under the hoop. And then you can see this possession, where Northern Arizona did everything they could to box out, but got pushed inside of the rebound radius and still give up an offensive rebound. And the last area we need to talk about is in a zone. When shots go up in a zone, the reason why it's hard to box out is because nobody really knows who their matchup is. Here you'll see that this is an obvious matchup, but the middle defender is stuck because he has two people that he could box out and doesn't even go and hit either one of them. So defenders in a zone actually have to put more of an effort in to locate who they're supposed to box out. Because as this shot goes up, these two box outs make sense, but this third defender would have to come all the way over and locate number two if he chose to crash. Now Syracuse is known for running a 2-3 zone and still being good defensively, and part of that reason is because their big man, as you can see here in the middle, is typically someone close to 7 feet tall who can go and grab rebounds above the rim, which gives them a huge advantage. But even with a team like Syracuse who is long and athletic, there are going to be times where your matchups don't work out. As you can see here, there's two obvious box outs, but nobody is left because of the rotation for this backside wing. And you'll see in this clip that when the ball bounces the wrong way, there's nobody left for him and it leads to wide open offensive rebound putbacks. Wins and losses will often come down to one or two possessions, and being more disciplined in this area of the game than your opponent will often give you the edge to come out with a win. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.